we need a ref uh, immigration reform that includes many people. The Farm Workforce Modernization Act will leave behind many, many workers, even people who have worked in the fields for many, many years. So some of the requirements, they would not apply. Community members gathered in front of the federal building in downtown Fresno to protest against the Farm Workforce Modernization Act on August 29th. Forms of the H-2A program have existed before, and the clear example is the Bracero program, which existed around 1942 through 64, and the name Bracero, meaning arms, comes from indigenous communities who pretty much lend their arms to work the land here in the United States with the hope to also create an economic and sustainable impact back in their community, supporting their families. And that is known as historical debt that hasn't been paid to migrants, neither to migrants in Mexico. So these braceros now are elders who are also dying in the community. So we need to observe these forms of slavery because that's what it is. Protesters called for Senator Alex Padilla to vote no on the act, a bipartisan bill which was led by Representatives Zoe Lofgren and Dan Newhouse. So maybe you in the media know that Senator uh, Padilla went to the fields. He was acting as a farm worker. Uh, he posted in his social media so we want to know what did he learn from being in the fields? Did he learn that there is many majority of the farm workers that are there have been here for more than 20 years and they have not been able to regularize their status? Did he learn that these farm workers don't have access to the essential services that they deserve because they work? The act aims to establish provisions to offer immigrant farm workers lacking permanent legal status, certified agricultural worker status, and changing the H-2A temporary worker program. I really like to think about the intergenerational impacts. So as of right now, when we look at this timeline, right now, the language of the bill, it excludes black indigenous communities as it right now. Why? Because the exclusions of this bill say that if at any point you interacted with law enforcement in a negative way, of course, and have a record, uh, then you won't become a legal resident. You won't become a US citizen. And when we observe this issue, then we know that black and indigenous communities are gonna be heavily impacted by the exclusion of this bill. So, that is as of right now, the language of the bill. I would definitely pay detailed attention to that. So when we are talking about normalizing this, particularly with the component of H2A, it is a form of slavery. When you look at it, when you're observant, particularly talking about the Bracero program, how the vast majority of those participants were also from indigenous communities that were brought to this country to lend their arms and with the hope that they will create a, like a 401k, a savings account. Till this day, that savings account has not been paid. The elders are dying and their families are suffering the impact of that loss. So when we bring more H2A workers with no, with, without, without knowing what their rights are once that they arrive to this country, then effectively, there is a system of isolation that is being created because these H2A workers are not allowed to talk to their fellow community members, communities that are already established. So that knowledge transfer is not happening. Mm -hmm. And when workers are not informing each other, then the fire of the organizing community to demand your rights, to fight for your rights, effectively is being suffocated by this program because when workers start demanding their rights, what is them, theirs, then they are told, if you don't do it, then I'm gonna bring somebody else to do it. And that somebody else is an H2A worker. Okay, Fresno State has a very, very special place in my heart. I love, I love the, um, the, social, the social studies building. And also my peer, colleague, mentor, big heart, Deborah Saxton. Um, Please, you know what to do. You are the organizers of the world. Just join, join the farm worker movement in any form. 
and any form of disruption that you want to continue pursuing that path to liberation, do it. We want to urge Senator Padilla to oppose this act and more than anything, to listen to us. We have met with his staff many, many times and we haven't been able to meet with him. So that's where we want to call on him to meet and listen to our voices. We represent people, farm workers, and we have been working with them many times. And like Oralia says, we have here what are the needs.